Guys, welcome back to another video. Um, thought I would do another one of these. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, did one, must have been before I started traveling uh, last winter and a few others like it. But basically, a breakdown, uh, sort of like a reaction video, but not really. What I'm gonna be talking about today, um, and I needed to get some context to this because it was just such a heavy situation instead of just playing the video, that I could get some fun insight into what something like this is like. This is a video of um, just about a month ago, Billy Kemper had this, right after I hurt my back at Jaws, um, this crazy cleanup set came, and it was really bizarre what happened is a bunch of guys got caught and Billy ended up getting sucked to the left of Jaws, in which I've seen guys get worked over there, but get pulled out, and he got pulled in onto the rocks like I've never seen before, and Zord actually captured all that footage. So, some context of what, what went down was kind of like, Curtis, who was our safety guy, rescued me, got me on the boat, 10 minutes later that set cleans everyone up, and multiple guys got cleaned up in the set, and so skis go in, right, to grab their guys, and there's guys on the cliff radioing, hey, surfer is here, in this location, in this location. And there's the inside Jaws is really gnarly. The um, structure of the cliffs and the way the coast is right there, there's like these mini bays, each one sketchier than the one before. Like one has a, where you get in and out of the water, the other is like you can be on the inside and be kind of safe, but it's still a dangerous situation. But on the left of that is this it's not really a bay or a small bay or anything like that. It just has these big bulges. And so the full force of the wave doesn't lose its energy and there's just big waves hitting this area with these big submerged rocks. So that is where Billy got sucked into. And that's what we're gonna see right here. And it's so, it's so interesting how these type of things happen, how quick they can happen. It looks like young Ty on that wave right there and he gets knocked off, but just like that, guys get caught and you could tell by how that clip was filming even the cameramen were surprised by how fast these cleanup sets come that wave was just psycho actually but um you come over a small one and all of a sudden you didn't see the lump out the back and this is happening and so in this lip real quick I'll just kind of say who I see and where Billy is furthest to the right is Billy that's him here with this uh, red to yellow faded board. Um, I don't know who is over here. I do know Kona Olivero, Matahi, um, Droulette, Ottman, and um, those were just guys that were out that day. But in this lineup, I think is those those guys were in these boards right here. But I know Billy is the furthest right, closest to the, what we call the North Peak, and also closest to the left, and that's probably part of why he got pulled into where he did. So, just absolute destruction. These are 10 foot boards. Look at the size of that wave. Um, a lot of times Jaws is so perfect, it's hard to tell the size. These are all 10 foot boards. And that one right there with the orange and black on the bottom, that's a vertical 10 foot board. So, the face of that wave, is you, you would duplicate that board four, maybe five times. You're looking at a 50 foot wave face here that these guys just got caught by. And two things usually happen. Either you overpower and pull your board out the back, or your board gets caught in the white water enough and overpowers you and pulls you over the falls on these. Our leashes are super thick. And so it's kind of a battle of like, were you just far enough out that your board didn't get caught in the main lip enough that for it to drag you over? Or were you able to yank? I always dive under and I just give my board a good yank and hope that it pulls um, to get lateral and get through the lip, because if it's like this and that face is hitting it, you're probably getting pulled over. Just carnage. Like that board, the yellow and black, it seems to me, there's one, the red one going out the back, that that guy may have gone over, but who knows. Huge breathe, huge spit. So clean for Jaws, I can't believe how clean this day was. I was so bummed to be out because it stayed this clean for hours after. Uh, crazy enough, Billy actually went back out after this and got his best wave. So.
So at this point, like all the safety guys are like, surfers down, surfers down, huge cleanup set. And you can see here, Billy's trying to escape to the left. He's paddling over the left. Looks like Kona Olivero is in this whitewater one. He's gonna get worked on this, but the current is already shoving him. Because of the jaws, it's the way the peak is, the current is shoving him into the channel uh, towards the boats and the skis and everyone. Billy is trying to scratch. He doesn't want to get, you don't, you don't want to ever get caught. So you're just looking for escape and there's more sets coming. So it looks like that's not going to work out. So the question obviously is from a lot of you who probably don't get to experience <laughs> that kind of beat down. Like that was a pretty fucking long hold down right there. Holy shit. Um, you were just powerless. You were so small in compared to the power of that, that type of uh, wave, that size of wave here that there's not much you can do, but try to get your breath. And so here he's looking around like, Oh man, no, there's nowhere to go. No one's coming to get you at this point, And you see the wave coming. I think that's Kona Oliveira right there. And the more of these you take on your head, even with a vest, the more exhausted you get. And if you take enough somewhere in like Nazare, where you just keep con taking continuous waves all the way to the beach, by the 15th or 16th wave, even if you don't get knocked unconscious or go unconscious underwater, you could go unconscious just from the lack of oxygen between waves. I'll be okay, Billy. This is now where he is sucked over to the left. And this is a really freaky thing that happened because I was on the boat and I'm hearing the radio because there's a radio from the top. They radio to the boat, which radios to the safety guys saying, hey, the servers are here, the servers are here. There was a, a radio coming in saying, Billy's in the, in the gulch. And so the ski shot into this, the gulch that's right in front of, um, right in front of Jaws. But there's one on the other left and there's one on the right. And Billy was a little far in, so... They're like, why? Like, Curtis is like, where is he? Where is he? On the radio, looking everywhere for him. But in the morning, the sun rises over the mountain. So anything looking in, the glare is in your eyes and it's all whitewashed, right? Like, if you're out the back on the boats looking towards the cliff, you can't see anything because the glare of the sun and the mist. And on that bright white water, it's just, it just screws with your eyes. So they're shooting into this, this bay where you can get inside of it. And then you have to launch continuous white water. It's like eight foot white water is on boulders, but just to the left, or if you're facing the ocean, the right of that is another little area. And that's where Billy's getting pulled now. And they didn't see him at first and they're scratching everywhere looking for him. Like these are the best safety guys in the world. And there's all the, we have all the faith uh, that they're gonna get him. But it's like in those situations, no matter how good everything is, like you're surfing these life threatening conditions and things can take a turn for the worse, like it did here. Like he's looking around, he knows he's in a bad area. Right there, you can see see Billy is looking in. He said, "Oh man, I'm getting pulled pulled more and more over." And he knows Jaws better than anyone, so he knows the severity of the situation. I'm guessing he's like, "This is really bad," because the size of those white waters, the cliff thrusts out, and it doesn't dissipate on the rocks. So heavy. And it's like, what do you do? Like, do you keep your board, which is your lifeline, or do you try to get rid of it? Because every set, every wave, it's dragging you further in. You cannot duck dive this type, this size of a board. Oh, that looks like the worst feeling ever. And only Billy could say what is going through his head right there. But I one time went through, uh, ended up in front of the rocks at Mabs, and I was looking at a huge, giant white water and then the rocks, and I was like. I was like, I'm gonna fucking die right now because I'm gonna get smashed into these rocks. Like I, there, I wasn't gonna get grabbed yet. The white water was coming. The rocks were there, and I, and I was there was just I was just it was hammer anvil situation. Like I, there was nowhere to go, and so I ended up like getting hit by the wave and trying to get my feet in front of me, and I landed on my feet on the rock and kicked off and got sucked through them. And it was so sketchy because I only had half bottom half of my gun and I had my leash on still. And I feel like if it had gotten wrapped, I don't know if I'd have had the power to reach down and pull my rip cord. Luckily, it was like a little sea anchor and it pulled me through between the rocks and it didn't. Um, 
That didn't happen, but it was it was spooky that it could have happened. So here we have Curtis coming in. He's looking for Billy, like I said. There's all rocks in here, and he knows that too. And with that glare, it's really hard to see. But due to the radio guys, they knew he was in here somewhere. Oh, there you can see the huge rocks. And Billy's literally right in front of them. Oh my god, such a bad situation. This right here, where, what Curtis is doing, shows the skill and the knowledge of, of these guys. Because he's using... So, jet ski driving is a skill, right? In big surf, and big rescue. He's using uh, the wave and the amount of water that wave is pushing in to give himself depth. So he stays close on the back of the wave because those rocks are in there. He saw where Billy was, but he has to get in because if he waits like he normally would, the rock submerges and he doesn't get over it in time. He just goes over that big main rock. Oh, so sketchy. Looks like the white waters are mellowing out more, but I believe this is between sets and it's still this size. And here he just gets pushed into by like this this massive cliff thing. If we just go right, I just want to see that again. Like here, this situation, this whole situation right here, is just a nightmare. You have a giant double up coming at you, a huge rock right here. And Billy, he, I remember he told me he was like, I didn't want to let my board go, but it kept blowing me. And he's like, I felt it. For one second on this big double up, the leash wrapped the rock, and he said, I was like, fuck this, and he just pulled his uh, leash, and he ended up losing his gun into the, into the, or maybe it was after this one. It might have been after this one, because he's still on his board, it looks like, after this. But at some point, it was something like this happened. Oh, the gun, right, right, he literally went over the biggest rock. Yeah, he still has his board. He, he said he continued on, and then he ended up pulling his leash and maybe he got his board again but I think I thought he said it got smashed on the rocks all that current surging down the cliff yeah so that's as much as the cameras were able to capture um, super heavy be down I wish we had like maybe a drone more aerial footage of of what was going down but I'd never seen that and it just adds I'd never seen that happen at jobs but maybe these guys have because Billy's been surfing out there a lot longer than I have but um it just adds another level of like oh man like <laughs> now like so we have to deal with the beat down the hold down and there's a possibility if you're on a little too deep when you get caught inside getting pulled into that left area and just getting absolutely damaged on rocks like it just adds, Billy's a beast, you can see he has a knee brace on, he's back out, um, just with Curtis, looks like he lost his board somewhere after that, somewhere after right here, he gets pulled in, and he did end up getting grabbed shortly after that, um, and it's just kind of one of those things, like, Curtis was frustrated because he couldn't get in as quick as he wanted to, Billy was frustrated because he took so many waves on the head, but, like, this is just the intensity of these situations, like, Billy comes back out and the first thing is he's just tripping like see he's like I was waving my board um, exhausted he comes over and he asks how I'm doing and I'm like bro how are you doing like that was super nice. and he was just tripping he was like that was super bad like that was super scary and I just I went in with Andrea Muller because she was giving me a ride in um, and Billy ended up going back out and getting some really sick waves but yeah it just shows like no matter how prepared you are like you can you can prepare for everything in your control but the ocean is just going to throw unpredictable things at us that we can't control and something like that where you're all of a sudden find yourself when 15 foot white waters on the inside tied to a 10 foot board with rocks behind you and waves in front of you these situations are gnarly and things can go very very wrong very quickly but um I'd be curious to see how someone else would have gone through that situation. Billy's a vet, and he seems to have stayed cool, calm, collected throughout that, and it just shows like the experience in the water. And I, I oftentimes feel, 
feel similar when that's just, that kind of stuff is going down. You, you have nothing to do but focus on the situation at hand. There's no complaining. There's no choice to make. There's no, do I go on this wave or not go on this wave? That's all gone now. You have only one option, and that option is to survive in that moment. And so it creates this crazy clarity when you get in the, yourself in those situations where you have this singular, singular, singular goal of survival and to get out of that. And that ended fine, but it could have easily not ended fine, you know, so. Interesting thing that I would give a, my take on um, a situation like that, as well as just show you, because um, that clip, like, it just didn't really go out. It wasn't shown on Instagram and, um, Sometimes these harrowing moments get shown and you guys don't get to see them as much as I think you should. It just shows, it just causes you to appreciate even more like how intense sometimes these situations can be in. So uh, thanks for watching. It's another injury special breakdown for you. Um, obviously can do more of these, but I'll be back in the water soon. So we'll be back to surf it. It's, uh, but if you guys have requests on certain situations that you'd like me to give my take on, and then I could do more of these videos, something like Kai Lenny's crazy Nazare beatdown or, or things like that. Um, I wish I had the footage from when I competed there because I had the situation in a heat where I got caught inside and the skis didn't come to grab me. This was years ago. There was like, there's no like, like Kurt, Curtis and Kolamana and, and Andre and all these guys that do water safety here in Maui, like they're the best of the best. I wish so badly that we'd had them there at Nazare when we were competing because we had Abe Lerner, but the other guys were newly trained on the skis and they just wouldn't go into the impact zone as much as we would have liked them to when we were in there. Abe was doing pretty much crazy safety for six man heats all day long in Giant Nazare, one of the first like real cowboys to really manhandle that inside section over there but um i ended up in this situation where i took like 16 waves on the head to the beach and i just remember like by the end it was like one of the first times i had gotten worked for so long so many waves over and over again that i was like uh, i couldn't focus on even trying to move a certain direction uh, towards the beach or what I was just at the mercy of it and I was just focusing on my breath between just beat down hold lungs on fire pop up <laughs> next one boom same thing <gasps> next one boom like like 15 by the time I got to the beach I was so mad that I hadn't <laughs> gotten grad and next uh, he Ian Walsh went through the same thing and Ian's brothers Sean and DK Walsh um are also just excellent, excellent watermen, highly trained. They're, they're as trained as someone you would find in an ambulance. You know, like they take they take all the extra courses for safety um, and life-saving techniques, and they are trained to do this type of stuff on the jet skis. Um, they were on the beach in Nazareth when Ian did the similar what I did, and, and I remember them just being so furious at the incompetence of the drivers at that time. Um, but, like... It just goes to show, like they 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 were willing to go where others wouldn't wouldn't like. Look what Curtis is doing here for Billy. Like he's in dodging between rocks, huge rocks at fifteen foot white water where you have a cliff and wave and rocks, and you're on a ski trying to grab a guy, and he's like ripping in and out. He knows the exits, and he's just trying to get to the guy he's there to save, and he did it successfully. So these guys are the best in the biz. Like I wish we could take them on some of our trips with us. Like we when we travel, like hey, please can. I bring you with me, uh, we'll hire a ski and and you can watch over us at some of the slabs we surf. Um, but that's the video, hope you guys enjoyed it, signing off.